is, is usually when you are when you are a provider business, let's say one of the big four IT providers in the world, um, obviously what you do, the business you do with your customers, they give you data. Um, you are a processor in most cases. There are some gray areas there that process is sort of these, these big four online, but still you are a processor. But then for your very own processing of employee data, for your own employees that you hire, you are certainly a controller with regard to that employee data process. So you can have two roles in the same organization. That's a simple example. There's other ones where it's more difficult. But I think the practical advice is always to look at each processing activity and then define, and you can do this by doing a simple chart, right? And you can control the process of what the arguments, criteria, what they're actually doing, get input from business, and then you make your assessment that helps you put in the right qualification in place. And it may be very simple in organizations where you are just a controller all the time. And sometimes you're just a processor all the time. But sometimes it's not clear. And for some business activity, you are a controller. Sometimes you're a processor. Sometimes you're maybe even a subcontractor. And sometimes you may even be a joint controller. And, and so on, and so on, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's about, about the quality. I uh, thought about the uh, practical situation in the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. you know, insurance, com insurance companies work with brokers, which are independent that have their own clients, their own individuals, mm -hmm. that uh, are marketed for providing them uh, insurance uh, products. Yeah. In the same time, these brokers have contracts with the insurance companies. Yeah. And in the process of selling uh, insurance products, up to a point, the broker has uh, may have the quality of uh, joint control with the insurance company, but after a sale, a sale of, uh, of an insurance product and providing additional services to the individuals, namely uh, administration of the, of the insurance policy during the contract, the insurance contract, the broker switches more to the uh, processor quality. So it's a borderline situation where you don't really know whether to use the joint controller agreement or a data processing agreement. It's a, it's a mixture because it's independency between them, brokers have their own clients, and those clients become the clients of the insurance company only after accepting the, the offer. Did you encounter this situation? I'm waiting for the question, but yeah. Um, yes. So, so that's a very complex industry sector as such, when you look at personal data processing. And indeed, all these different stakeholders have to be involved in the of it. So I think the assessment of what is important, what type of activity up to what time, period in time in the whole process, um, is an entity a controller process and how does it change? Because you need to do that in order to then have the proper agreements put in place. If you don't have done this analyst up front, Yes, yes. I, I, I don't so, I, wait for an answer now because yeah. we are brainstorming for days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so there are different types of agreements depending on the situation, but the key is the assessment that needs to be doing, and we will probably not. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we will not solve that today. Anyway, so, yeah. um, so, so here the key point is, so the moment you change, you do as a processor. You, determine, you suddenly stop determining the purposes, why you did it, what purpose start negotiating with like, some other people, then this is dangerous and you may end up in this. And also, there's a liability angle to this because the EPR for the first time tells you you become liable directly if you do that. So, yeah. um, this is not fitting on the screen, but you can read it perhaps. Cloud services and international data transfers um, is a topic that's also very specific at the same time as it seems to be um, at least a number of people in the audience that um, agree with that. So what's happening under GDPR? GDPR is not really changing you know, the general concept of data transfers internationally. It's not changing the, the regime that we used to know under the European Directive. 
It's also not changing how Romania, international law, and so forth, we get transfers. Um, there's still the general prohibition of data transfers to countries outside Europe. Um, that doesn't change the GDPR. Unless, of course, you have corporate safeguards in place, and you have the example of all of these decisions that you can read from the European Commission, it's only second among all countries that have received their status, and then you're free to, uh, to basically transfer data or have access from these jurisdictions to uh, on data in Europe. Um, you can still use EU standard contractual clauses, again, contracts, so they have not changed. We have a pending case in Ireland, Facebook. Um, Following up, we have a good safe power. We've got struck down on the of justice now, it's replaced by the, uh, the privacy shield. So we have to see how this will play out. I think these EU model contracts will continue to exist. We have to seize them. I think it's most likely to happen, depending on whether there's a case later this year, that uh, the European Commission will be forced to have new contract clauses uh, in order to offer something to companies. Um, for the time being, they're still valid, you can use them. So are the current standard clauses controlled to process or GDPR compliant in your view? Um, yes, it regards the obligations for the processor. Yeah. I think what we probably have to do practically speaking, when you look at these clauses, because they have all references and some of the things that we have in Article 28 may not be fully reflected. Yeah. What you probably have to do, you have to develop a short annex where you then include some of the material that you get from Article 28 to make sure it's capturing that going forward after May. Some people say it's fine to continue to use them, the risk is low, because that's what the European Commission has published. If the European Commission has not published another template, we continue using the templates that we have. Does that answer the question? Yeah, sort of does. The main problem.